Hi, uh, uh, this is Balu here and uh, I represent a company called uh, Pradyumna Technologies uh, Private Limited. Uh, we are actually presenting you a series of uh, video lectures on software engineering. Software engineering is uh, one of the subjects in 5th semester BCA uh, in Bangalore University. Uh, first we are going to look on uh, unit 1 uh, which basically has a chapter called software products and software process. Now, uh, before we actually get into that uh, chapter, uh, I would like to give you a small introduction about what is engineering. Because before we learn software engineering, we need to understand first what engineering is. See, as you can see from the slide, engineering is a branch of science and technology concerned with design, building and use of engines, machines and structures. So, anybody who is involved in engineering is called as an engineer. Now, sometimes uh, we also need to know who a scientist is because it is very important for us to differentiate between an engineer and a scientist. So, scientists are those who create theories whereas engineers are those who implement them. So, both engineers and scientists, you know, they work hand in hand and more importantly, science is about knowledge and engineering is about invention. So, whenever you talk of engineering, it's all about innovation, it's all about invention, it's all about getting you getting some new product to the world. Okay. So, what engineers uh, do? So, in simple terms, uh, engineers identify a problem and they come out with a solution. Now, uh, if uh, you must have heard of uh, varieties of engineers in your day to day life, you must have heard of uh, automobile engineers. Uh, you must have heard of uh, chemical engineers, you must have heard of civil engineers, you must have heard of aerospace engineers or even structural engineers. So what all these engineers do on a day to day basis, they identify a problem and they come up with a solution and when they do that, they are actually creating something new. Uh, I will give you a simple example, uh, since I live in a place called Bangalore, so Bangalore is a place where there is lot of traffic congestion. So now congestion of traffic is a big problem. Now to overcome that particular problem, a structural engineer will come out with a solution called as a flyover. So when they design a flyover, they basically help and ease out the traffic congestion. So like this, engineers always identify a problem and they come out with a solution. Now uh, if you can look at that uh, slide here, you can see that how engineers have helped us in our day to day life. For example, your know, invention of a commercial aircraft was done by an engineer or if, I, if the invention of a microwave oven was done by an engineer or uh, something which we often use uh, very frequently on our day to day life, something like Google where you want any information, it's available on your fingertips almost instantaneously, even that's done by an engineer. So an engineer is somebody who basically identifies a problem and he comes out with a solution. Now, what is software uh, engineering? Just like another branch of engineering, just like mechanical engineering or just like automobile engineering, uh, you have uh, a branch called software engineering and the person who is involved in software engineering is called as a software engineer and what does a software engineer do? He basically develops new products that is <coughs> very important sorry so the main important uh, uh, idea of uh, software engineering is to get in new products to the market and you can classify the products into two types okay so we can classify them as a generic product and we can also classify them as a customized product so what is a software product a software product is a product it is nothing but a computer program or a computer application which you can install on your computer and start working with it. Uh, if you want to give me an example, uh, your MS Office is an example of a software product or you may have installed Tally in your computer, that is also an example of a software product. So any software application which you have on your computer which can be made to run is called as a software product. Now these software products can be broadly broadly classified into two areas. One is called as uh, generic products and the second one is called as customized products. Now we shall see what is the uh, basic difference between a generic product and a customized product. 
Now, what are generic projects? They are marketed and sold to any customer who wishes to buy them. So, we are all we also call these uh, generic products as off-the-shelf products. Now, what do you mean by off-the-shelf uh, products? You go to a computer shop and you ask for an antivirus. So, the shop vendor will give you an antivirus. So, that's an example of a generic product. That means you as a customer, you can go and buy the product. Or now you have a, a business setup and you want to buy an accounting software. So, you go and ask for tally. So, the moment you buy tally, that is an example of an generic product. So, generic product is a product which can be sold to any customer who wishes to buy, buy them. Even your operating system, for example, either it could be Windows 8 or Windows 7. So, whichever operating system you are actually using and installed on your computer is an example of a generic product. Now, what do you mean by a customized uh, product? Now, uh, customized product is uh, actually developed based upon the specific requirements of a customer. See, uh, there is a difference between a generic product and a customized product. Generic product is what is sold to any customer and in the case of a customized product, the customer will specify his requirements like what the product and what the product will look like and what are the features of that particular product. Now, I will give you one uh, simple example what a customized uh, product is. Let us say that uh, your college, they want to actually develop a software product for handling the classes and also for marking the attendance. Now, how the attendance is marked in your classes now, they are actually marked in the attendance register and the classes are handled where the lecturer comes in and starts handling the classes. But now, your college wants to ensure that they handle the classes in an online mode. That is, a lecturer will start delivering a session from a remote place. You will be able to take the lessons at your house and whenever you attend the class automatically your attendance should be updated in the attendance register now this is an example of a customized product now in this case of customized product here a specific customer now who is a specific customer your college itself is a specific customer now he ha they have a requirement what is the requirement they want to develop a product to actually ensure that all the classes are conducted online and the attendance should be taken online. So, that is an example of a customized product. Like this, we can think of any number of uh, customized uh, products. For example, banking system. A banker approaches a software development company and says that uh, uh, write a software program for me or build a software product for me to automate my entire banking system. So, that is an example of a customized product. Our Indian Railways uh, approaches a software company and says you automate our entire railway ticket reservation system. So that's an example of an that's an example of a customized product. Similarly, you have uh, other customized products like airline reservation systems, hospital management systems, etc. So now the basic idea here you have to understand that the software products can be classified into two types. One is called the generic product, and second one is called as the customized products. Okay. Now, in order to develop this uh, product, whether it could be customized or whether it could be generic project products, now you need to have a process. Now, what is a process basically? Uh, a process is, uh, it is a process of splitting the software development work into distinct stages containing activities with the intent of better planning and management. Now, this is what you mean by a software process. Now, what is a software process? It is nothing but a process of splitting the software development work into distinct stages. That means if you want to develop a software, you need to have distinct stages or distinct phases. Now, uh, if you want to consider a small analogy, if you want to consider a small analogy of uh, building a house. Now, uh, what are the different phases of building a house? First, you need to level the ground. That is the stage one. After leveling the ground, you need to lay the foundation that is stage 2. After laying the foundation, you need to construct the walls that is stage 3. After constructing the walls, then you have to plaster the walls stage 4. Then you have to put on the roof stage 5 and it goes on. So, all these are actually various stages of your house construction. Similarly, if I want to build a reliable software product, I need to follow a software process. Now, uh, any software process you think of, basically matches to something called as a process model. 
so what is a process model a model is a way of defining the process that means it basically consists of predefined stages or predefined phases now if you look at the uh, very generic model it consists of three phases the first phase is called as a concept phase the second phase is called as an implementation phase and the third phase is called as an maintenance phase now i will try and make you understand what do you mean by a concept phase and what happens in a concept phase and what happens in implementation and what happens in a maintenance phase now uh, let us once again go back to our earlier example of constructing a flyover now in order to construct a flyover why did we come out of an idea of constructing a flyover because there was a problem and what was the problem the problem was there was a huge traffic congestion in one particular area now the definition of the problem is actually written in the concept phase so what does a concept phase contain the concept phase contains the definition of the problem now once you have defined the problem you actually get into the next stage of your process model or the next phase of your process model called as an implementation phase now what happens in the implementation phase in the implementation phase you actually convert the problem into a solution so how do you convert problem into a solution you do all the drawing you do the civil engineering you bring in you bring in resources and you finally construct and erect a flyover now once it is done you have to now constantly get into a maintenance mode so what is a maintenance phase maintenance phase actually means making changes as and when it is required now as and when there could be a small maintenance activity which could be required after the flyover is constructed and that phase is called as a maintenance phase now if i want to relate that uh, to uh, the process model for a software development now uh, let us again go back to your example of an attendance monitoring system now the problem of uh, defining whether the attendance is uh, marked properly or not in your college and that problem is defined in your concept phase now once the concept phase uh, has been defined and once you have identified a problem and this problem has to be corrected what you basically do you convert that problem into implementation phase that means in the implementation phase you actually design a solution to the problem and once the solution has been designed and deployed and given to the customer the customer keeps on making some changes he keeps on making some request of changes and you need to adhere to those request and make those changes accordingly for example now the customer will come back and say that now your product is only marking the attendance but your product is not sending an sms to the parent where the student for whom the student is absent so what happens so in that case you will go and make some small minor changes in your product and you will change the product in such a way that now it will even start sending an sms if the student is absent so this is what i mean by a process model which basically consists of three distinct phases concept phase implementation phase and the maintenance phase i will once again tell you what are these three phases concept phase is about problem definition implementation phase is about converting the problem definition into a solution and the maintenance phase is making changes to the product now uh, based upon uh, the process what we have uh, seen now there are various types of uh, process models which has been proposed there are many types of process models i have given some uh, eight types of process model here they are your waterfall model the evolutionary model the spiral model the v model the incremental model rad model which stands for rapid application development agile model and iterative model but uh, uh, we will only be focusing on uh, waterfall model the evolutionary model and the spiral model because these three models are there in your curriculum and the other models uh, we will not be touching in this particular video series so keep watching our uh, video tutorials thank you so much for watching our uh, channel keep subscribing to our channel as well see you back see you soon with uh, another video series on process models thank you so much bye bye have a nice day